646, topping today's headlines in Sunrise Smart Start, the breaking news overnight. There was one winning ticket sold for the huge Powerball jackpot at this store in California. You see that video as it was closed overnight. It is the second billion dollar winning Powerball ticket sold in LA County in the last eight months. They've got something special going on there. The winning numbers last night on your screen now, 7, 10, 11, 13, 24, and the Powerball 24. Maybe you got your money back. Uh, the smallest prize you can have. There were five $1 million winning tickets sold around New York. Haven't got the locations just yet. Maybe once from our area. So check your tickets this morning. In other headlines, the man convicted of murdering a woman from Webster three years ago has been sentenced. Pierre Scala will spend the next 25 years to life in prison. He was found guilty of murder for the death of Kathy O'Brien. The prosecution said Scala stabbed O'Brien at her home on Oakdale Drive in October 2019. The two were considered acquaintances, and yesterday we heard from the victim's brother outside the courtroom. He was found guilty. He's going to jail for 25 years, but still, that doesn't really do anything to help bring Kathy back. Uh, you know, it's it's really sad that I, we don't know what she did to deserve it. It's just it's disheartening, mind-boggling, indescribable. Scala was also convicted in this case of criminal possession of stolen property. For that charge, he got an additional year. Also sentenced yesterday, 50-year-old Juan Rivera for killing his wife, Maribel Diaz, last year. Rochester police found Diaz dead in her car. Rivera was arrested after a standoff at his family's home. Just before he was brought into custody, officers say he started a fire in his basement. The flames burned through the house, killing several pets. Rivera pleaded guilty to manslaughter and arson. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison for the homicide charge in one to three years for arson. Tomorrow marks one year since the deadly ambush on police in Rochester when RPD officer Anthony Mazurkiewicz was killed and his partner that night, Sino Singh, was wounded. When they were attacked, the officers were working that night a potential lead on a homicide case when they were shot in an unmarked vehicle. An innocent bystander, a teen girl, was also hit. The Mazurkiewicz family released a statement this week saying in part, the past year has been nothing short of a nightmare for our family as we have grieved. We've also drawn on strength through the kindness of the great, greater Rochester community. We cannot begin to thank everyone enough as we continue to grieve the loss of our husband, father, and papa. They say please remember his name, his story, and that his life mattered. As for what is still unfolding in the courts with this case, Kelvin Vickers, the man accused of killing Officer Mazurkiewicz, is awaiting trial. He is accused of several other crimes in the area, including the murder of two others here in the city. His trial is set for September. Happening today, nurses from Rochester General are voting on whether to strike. According to the Union of Nurses and Allied Professionals, the group has been bargaining with hospital leaders, these administrators, since last October, but still cannot reach an agreement on several key issues, mainly staffing and wages. That vote is today in Arondequoy. New York state lawmakers are considering a move to regulate short-term rentals like Airbnbs. This would require property owners to make some significant changes. The proposed legislation would allow the state to track, regulate, and tax short-term rentals. Under the measure, if it passes, property owners would be required to keep a record of bookings and to insure their property. So effectively, those who are looking to participate in short-term rentals would most likely see a cost increase associated with using that. That's just a result of the occupancy taxes that are going to be levied upon both the consumer and the Airbnb owner, as well as the sales tax aspect of it. That would be most likely levied in part against the actual Airbnb renter. In Canandaigua, a separate issue, Airbnb sent a notice to property owners this past week explaining the city there is considering restricting the number of nights you as an owner can rent out your property a year to just just 30 nights. Council is expected to have a public hearing on that coming up August 1st. $125,000 in state funding to help fight human trafficking. Local state Senator Jeremy Cooney says the grant means Miss Julie's Beauty School can now have a location downtown at the historic Sibley building. Miss Julie's provides services for survivors of human trafficking as well as those at risk, giving them the opportunity to earn a license in cosmetology. More than 200 conditional licenses for cannabis dispensaries have been approved. That brings the total number statewide to 463. Nine of yesterday's recipients are from the Finger Lakes. State regulators in their latest meeting also approved a cannabis growers showcase, which allows licensed sales outside dispensaries as a way for growers to engage directly with customers. We really uh, wanted to create an opportunity that detaches 
retail from brick and mortar locations. So while our, while our card licensees are, are working to secure that, um, the ones that we do have open and are doing delivery can now secure locations outside of their dispensaries, outside of their uh, delivery locations to do pop-up sales, uh, to meet customers where they're at. Cannabis growers must follow the same regulations as storefront owners for dispensaries. Showcases are only allowed in cities and towns, by the way, where sales are allowed. You'll have to be 21 or up to go inside. 653 Sunrise Traffic, new reports of an issue in southwest Rochester, South Wedge, Elmwood Avenue, Mount Hope. There's a car fire reported with first responders headed out to that. The expressway is looking okay, including from the west side. That's your view this morning. Upper 50s, we'll check that forecast with meteorologist James Gilbert in just a second. Monroe County has to go back and reevaluate the proposal to expand the Seneca Park Zoo. That's because the projected work costs came in way beyond the proposed plan. The zoo wants to add a new tropics exhibit and a main entry plaza, but the county says the bid for the work came in at more than $173 million, $52 million higher than what they were thinking. The Associated Builders and Contractors Empire State Chapter says the cost is a result of the county's project labor agreement, which mandates contractors hire workers from union halls. Supporters of these types of requirements, though, say they do come with valuable protections. Project labor agreements ensure that workers are being treated fairly, that they're getting prevailing wage and fair benefits, and the workplace protections that we as a state prioritize in all sectors. The expansion was first introduced last May. The plans include a 220,000 gallon aquarium and a renovated tropic center. But again, county leaders say they're going to have to reevaluate everything, their options before they move forward because of that cost. A woman from Rochester has a great opportunity right now to work at the Women's World Cup just getting started. Gabriela Pana, Miss Puerto Rico, Rochester in 2012, is now in New Zealand, taking her special talents with U.S. State Department Global. She's working diplomatic security services at the tournament. Pana gave us some insight on her role for the games in New Zealand and Australia. Some of our key roles are maintaining accountability of the players and communicating important information um, because back and forth because there's a lot of moving parts um, between team security, venue security, host nation security, uh, host nation government. Um, and we also have a joint operations center that's run 24 seven with analysts and other special agents. The World Cup just getting started today. What a great opportunity for her. By the way, the U.S. women open up their run with their first match coming up tomorrow night. If you hear from a friend or someone saying, you got to watch out for your plans today, there might be some rain. They haven't been listening to us and this <laughs> guy because right. that'll be rain tonight. We are good to go this morning. Yeah, that's right. And, and that's another thing when if you look at just a generic app, it'll yes. show storms yes. today. Yes. Uh, but that's misleading. Really, you got to look at that hour by hour that shows you the vast majority of the day is good. Those storms don't really move in until late tonight, even after sunset. But when they do move in, they'll bring some rumbles of thunder. Uh, could be some alarm clocks going off early Friday morning, and then tomorrow will be busy. Looks like a couple of rounds of storms, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and then the weekend, so far, so good. Saturday and Sunday both look mostly dry outside of a very isolated shower on Saturday. Those temperatures yeah. should be yeah, pretty good as well. And we'll see a nice warm up into next week. All right. Thank you, James. And thank you for watching us here at Sunrise. We're back with you at 725. CBS Morning starts in just a few moments. wherever you are on rochesterfirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.